Ishaya continues his many um, prophecies towards the nations in this chapter. And so today's chapter, we are in chapter 21 of the book of Yeshaya, and it begins as, begins as uh, follows. Masa midbar yam kisukot ba negev lachalof mi midbar ba me'eres no ra'ah. The desert of the sea, pronouncement like the gales, the race through the negev. It came from the desert, the terrible land. And it's not clear who this is referring to. Which, which tribe? There are those who say that's referring to Babylon, because later on in the chapter we'll have the, uh, we'll have the words for Bavel uh, mentioned during this prophecy. Uh, but, uh, and why would it be that, that, what is it, Midbar Yam? That, why are they called that? The desert of the sea. It's unclear. It's a, it's a group of people that are, at this point, successful people coming up from the, from the sea. Chazot Kasha Hu Gadli. So Yeshaya says, a harsh prophecy has been given to me. A harsh prophecy. The betrayer is betraying, the ravager ravaging. Advanced Elam, lay siege media. Media, parasu madai, who will defeat the, the, um, the, uh, the Babylonians. And um, let's read one more verse and I'll make a Therefore, my loins are seized with trembling. I am gripped by pain like a woman in childbirth, too anguished to hear, too frightened to see. So, right. And what, what we have here, which is interesting, is Yeshaya is discussing his emotional reaction to this harsh prophecy. There are going to be times where we'll see where Yeshaya is appreciative of what God has to say to him. And this is one of the times where he sees something that's so horrific, which he's seen over the last number of chapters, that he's saying that this pains him. It's the way that I, and I think many others understand this, talking about his emotional reaction to getting this prophecy. Continues, right? Ta'a levavi palatsut be'at titini. At Neshef Chishki Stam Li Lacharada. Continues, he says, My mind is confused. I shudder and panic. My night of pleasure has turned to fear or to terror. Aro Hashulchan, set the table. Sofa Hatzafit, go get the watchmen. Achol Shato, eat and drink. Humu Hasarim Mishchu. Magain, eat and drink off officers, grease the shields, get ready, get the watchmen up there to guard the town, right? That's what you have to do. And interestingly, for those of you who, uh, who, who read it, the, um, the uh, sequel to, um, to Kill a Mockingbird, go set a watchman, if I'm getting that correct, go set a watchman, presumably it comes from this verse. Go set a watchman, the idea of a watchman, an arbiter, somebody who can be, in a sense, like a, a judge to judge over things, right? Atticus Finch was a hero. Maybe he's not such a hero in this book that was not published very quickly, right? Though only published 50, 60 years later, whatever it is. But it seems to be that this, that it is this verse from which uh, she took the title, the whole idea about the watchman and is there a, a watchman and what's the job of the watchman um, is taken presumably from this verse in in Isaiah, in the book of Yeshaya. And now, why do you have to go set the watchman? We're in verse 6. For this is what God said to me. Go set up a sentry. Let him announce when he sees. And he will see lots of men coming in. Horsemen, riders on horses and donkeys and camels. And he will listen closely, right? This is the, the army of the Persians, of the uh, Parasu Madai, who are coming to destroy, if the way we're understanding this verse, the kingdom of Babel. And like a lion, he calls out, my sovereigns look out. I stand, right? I'm the watchman. I stand all day. And I'm at my post all, you know, all night. I, I, um, 
I stand watching over this tower to make sure that my people is not destroyed, that my people is not defeated. And now, when this watchman who would be up on the uh, the high tower to make sure that um, that the, the kingdom of Babel is not destroyed, and he's never seen anybody have the gall, the audacity to attack Bab- Babylon, now he sees this huge army coming in his way, and what does he call out? Fallen, fallen is. Babylon, Babel is going to lose or is already lost. All of her images of her gods have been destroyed, have been crashed down. Medushati uven garni asher shamati me'eta Adonai tzvot Elohei Yisrael, he got it lahem. My threshing, the product of my threshing floor. Right, what that is, when I heard from God, that is what I, uh, that is what I told you. And so uh, it's clear exactly what it means here by my threshing floor. Presumably it means it's referring to, uh, to, to Bavel, many people say. Others say it's referring to God. Others say it's referring to the chariot. Is, right? The idea of threshing, the idea of destruction, the idea of coming in and, um, and, and destroying stuff. So whether it's God who's doing it or whether it's referring to the Babylonians who did it in the past and how it's being done to them, unclear. That was the first of the three sort of pronouncements in this chapter. The second, that's right. We don't know exactly who that is. The Midbar Yam, those who come from from the uh, the the Sea of Dust, uh, as as we may uh, um, translate it. Um, and the second one is Masa Duma. So in verse eleven, Masa Duma Elai Elai Kore Mesair Shomer Ma Milayla Shomer Ma Milal. The Duma pronouncement, a call comes from Seir, watchmen. What of the night? What of the night, right? What's happening in the night? It's not clear exactly who Duma is either, but it, presumably it refers to um, it refers to Edom. We have the we have the Seir there. Asav gets a Har Seir. Um, and so that's presumably Edom, who for centuries the descendants of Asav were enemies of B'nai Israel. That's seemingly who were. Um, talking about, right? And so here in this phrase, Shomer Mami Layla, Mami Lail, right? Watchman, what of the night? He's saying, what of this night in this darkness? Are, are we going to be in this darkness forever? Are we going to be able to get out of this uh, darkness? Amar Shomer, Atavoker Vagam Layla, Im Tivayun Be'ayu, Shuvu. Etav. And the watchman said, morning came and so did night. If you would inquire, inquire, come back again. So the watchman, who in this verse, at least according to Rashi, is referring to God, he's saying, morning has come, and I can make the morning shine for you. But how is that going to happen? We understand im tivayun ba'ayun shuvu etayu. If you request it, if you do shuva, if you do tishuva, if you return, then day will come again. So the watchman here, it's at night, it's dark, it's scary, waiting for, for, for the light to come up. And at least the way Rashi says it is that, right, if you get up and you do, and you repent, then shuvu etayu, then you will come back again to the land of Israel, you will come back to, to God. And so while this is talking about the destruction of, of Duma, which presumably means the destruction of Edom, at least the way that some of the commentaries understand is that the second verse is referring to B'nai Yisrael. They see all this destruction. Maybe they're worried about what's going to happen. And as a result of that destruction, um, they, they're saying, how can we come back? And they're told, the, the, and they're told that the, 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 um, the way to come back, that they can come back if they do teshuvah. If they repent, there are others who understand you can return if you return to the land of Israel. That's what it means. The Jews have been exiled. It's talking about after Babylon. And so if the Jews have been exiled, um, they can um, that we can come back and and uh, and say. It. By the way, this the second verse. These words, um, "Ata boker," sorry, "Ata boker vigam laila" are actually referred to in the the. Um, it's cited in the verse um, verses that many people say after Havdala. After Havdala, there's a, a lengthy prayer. Uh, right? We're leaving Shabbat. We're leaving the Boker, the time of God's light. And we're going into sort of the night of the week. And in that verse, 
in the, these series of verses. If anybody says that, right, it says, Amar Shomer, Ata Boker, Vigam Laila, quoting from our verses, right? The morning will come. And also the night working, uh, using these verses, that the morning, the morning came, the, 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 difficulty, uh, the difficulty has left. And now uh, we're asking God, that's the other way around, I should say, the good part, the morning, Shabbat has come. And now we're going into the night, the regular week, and we're asking God to be with us there as well. The third pronouncement. Masa be'arav ba'ya'ar ba'erav talinu orchot didanin. So this is the pronouncement in the step. And it's not clear who this one is to also, but presumably it is to aravim, Arabs, who in the biblical understanding would be descendants of Yishmael. We don't have so much about Yishmael uh, in, the, in, the, in the Tanakh. Um, Yishmael, of course, the son of Avraham, yeah, he gets kicked out of the house. He's told he's going to have a big kingdom. But unlike many of the other nations with whom we sort of uh, start a relationship with in the book of Bereshit, whether it be Lavan Ha'arami, the Arameans who we have spoken about a, a, a lot, or the, or the Egyptians, or the Edomites, the descendants of Asaph, or the Moabites, or the Ammonites, the descendants of, of, um, of Lot, or, or the uh, other nations that are in Israel, the Canaan and others, we don't have too much about uh, Aravim, and here's a place where there is, though, there is a prophecy of uh, about, presumably it means to the Arabs. Lekrat sama hei tayu mayim, yoshvei eretz teima bilachmo kidmu no deid. Meet the thirsty water, you that dwell in the, the, in the land of, of, um, of Tema, greet the fugitive with bread. Okay? Um, and what he's basically saying is uh, the way that's understood by, by many is that these Aravim are related to other people who've been kicked out, who've been destroyed, who have been punished, and they're being told to greet the fugitives who are leaving either uh, in captivity or running for their lives, to greet them with food and water, to give them to eat, to give them to, to, to drink. You have to I treat for that. You have to treat them la, that way. Lekrat samei heteyu mayim yoshve eretz teima belachmo kidmu no day. Oh, sorry, I read that puzzle for the second time. Ki mitnei charavot nadadu mitnei charev nitushal mitnei keshet deruchal mitnei koven milchama. Why are these people here? Why are they going through their lands? Well, they're escaping because of the swords. Because of right, the the the, the sword was drawn and the bow was drawn because of the difficulty. Uh, of war. Because God has said to me, in another year, like the year of a hired laborer, something that you can count down on, something that will not take a long time, what's going to happen in a year from now? What's going to happen is all of the honor of Kedar will disappear. They will be destroyed. So just like this, uh, this worker was a worker, but it's only for amount of time. You only have amount of time. The Arabs, the the bnei kedar, ushar mispar keshet giburei bnei kedar yim atu, and the remaining bows of kedar's warriors shall be few in number. And this is one of the reasons people also believe beyond the word, uh, the the opening word where it says masa ba'erav, because it talks about here the bows, right? The the keshet of the uh, mighty ones of Kedar, and Yishmael was one who was Rovek Kashet. He was somebody who had his his bow. We are told, so the, their numbers have dwindled. Ki Adonai Israel Diber, because this is what God has spoken that they will be, that they will uh, they will suffer as well. Are they suffering because they didn't help other fugitives? They saw what other fugitives were doing. They didn't help them. It's not clear exactly what's happening. But we have three more pronouncements here. Presumably the first one to Babel, although it's not clear. The second one to Edom. And the third to uh, the, some of the, the descendants of Ishmael. More unfortunate doom and destruction that is going to be, uh, that, that's, that's, that's going to come to them because of the great power of the Assyrians. And because God is unhappy with the way that they are behaving, with the way that they are treating their fellow man they should be coming in and 
greeting the fugitive. And we'll just finish with what we said in the beginning. And what's to me most fascinating about this chapter is Yeshaya's emotional um, uh, statements that he is broken up, that these are such a horror and more horror and more horror. He's sort of like he can't take it anymore. The, the weight of having to offer all of these prophecies of doom and destruction.